In order to speak and write more concisely and less repetitively, we can use our object pronouns, and those are either our direct or indirect object pronouns. Before going over how to use both of those together, let's briefly review what an indirect object and what a direct object is. The direct object is the noun that is directly acted upon by the verb, whereas the indirect object is to whom or for whom is the direct object. So if we had the sentence, my mother gives me the card, the direct object is the card. What does my mother give me? The card. And to whom does my mother give the card? Me. So I am the indirect object and the card is the direct object. Instead of saying the card, I could say my mother gives it to me. And it would be our direct object pronoun. If we take this sentence for example, Susanna brought the drinks for James. We have both a direct object and an indirect object. To determine the direct object, we must ask what was verbed or what is verbed. So what was brought? The drinks. The drinks in this sentence are our direct object. For the indirect object, remember, we ask to whom or for whom is the direct object. So to whom or for whom were the drinks? James. So James is our indirect object. Assuming that both the drinks and James were previously mentioned, we can make this sentence more concise by using our indirect and direct object pronouns. Susanna brought him them. Since we already mentioned James and already mentioned the drinks in the conversation or context preceding the sentence, we know that him is James and him is our IOP, our indirect object pronoun. And we know that them is the drinks, our direct object pronoun. And here we see in English how we might use an indirect object pronoun and a direct object pronoun together. In Spanish, we can similarly use our indirect object and direct object pronouns together. To review, for our indirect object pronouns, we have me, te, le, nos, os, les. And our direct object pronouns are me, te, lo, la, nos, os, los, las. When using indirect object pronouns and direct object pronouns together in a sentence, the indirect object pronoun must always come before the direct object pronoun. If we have the example of ella me compró la hamburguesa a mí, we can shorten this sentence by using our direct and indirect object pronouns. We already have an indirect object pronoun because remember, if we have an indirect object in Spanish, we must also have an indirect object pronoun in that sentence. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You must have an indirect object pronoun if there is an indirect object in that sentence. So we have me, our indirect object pronoun, because a mi shows us that I in the indirect object. Now, looking at the sentence, to determine what our direct object is, ask yourself, what was verbed? So what was bought? La hamburguesa, the hamburger. Here we have our direct object. If we talk about la hamburguesa, which of these direct object pronouns would we substitute in in order to shorten the sentence? La, because it is singular and feminine and it's the third person. I'm not a hamburger, you're not a hamburger. La hamburguesa, it. As I mentioned, our indirect object pronoun always comes before our direct object pronoun. So when we put this together, we would have ella me la compro. Me is our indirect object pronoun, which always comes first, and la is our direct object pronoun, which always comes second. This is the order. It is invariably the order. Now that we have talked about the invariable order of indirect object pronoun and then direct object pronoun, we need to talk about 
one special change that happens when using these two together. If we are talking about the third person in both direct and indirect, le, les, lo, la, los, las, if we have one of each from this bottom line, there is a change that happens. Here we have yo les a ellos, yo les traigo el dinero. Once again, what is our direct object? What do I bring? El dinero, the money. Yo les traigo el dinero. If I want to make this shorter, I can use a direct object pronoun in place of el dinero, this direct object. Which would it be? Lo, because it is masculine and singular. When I change this sentence to include lo, I also now need to change les. Yo se lo traigo. In Spanish, we do not put le or les next to lo, la, los, or las. It is very difficult to say. Instead, we change it to se. So, if you have a él, a ella, a usted, a ellos, a ellas, a ustedes, along with lo, la, los, or las, to put our indirect object and direct object pronoun together, you will have se and lo, la, los, or las. The le or les is now se. Lastly, it is very important to note the placement. So not only indirect preceding direct object pronouns, but also when our verbs conjugated, infinitive, or in the gerund form. When it is conjugated, put the double object pronouns before the conjugated verb. However, if it is an infinitive or a gerund, we can put the double object pronouns at the end of those. Here we can see a couple of examples. Tú nos vas a conseguir los boletos, ¿no? Can either change to Tú nos los vas a conseguir, ¿no? And remember, los is in place of los boletos, or tú vas a conseguirnoslos, ¿no? And when we have this second option where we put both of our object pronouns at the end, they must go together, we cannot separate them, we will need to add an accent. And this accent is on the last syllable. On the other hand, if we have a gerund, such as Estoy buscándote las llaves, and buscando is our gerund. We can put our object pronouns either before our conjugated verb, as we are used to doing, or at the end of our gerund. Estoy buscándote las. Similarly, we must use an accent when we put these object pronouns at the end of our gerund. However, the placement is different. With the infinitive, it goes on the last syllable. With the gerund, it is the second to last syllable. To review, we can use indirect object and direct object pronouns together in our sentences. The indirect object pronoun precedes the direct object pronoun always, and they go together. We do not separate them. When we are using le or les with one of our third person direct object pronouns, this changes to se. And finally, if we are using our indirect and direct object pronouns with an infinitive or a gerund, we can attach those to the end of that infinitive or gerund, but we must add an accent, either on the last syllable or the second to last syllable.